In this clip, we will formally derive the mean, the variance, and the autocorrelation and covariance function of an AR1 or an autoregressive process. To do this, we'll firstly derive the MA infinity representation of the stationary AR1. And then using this, we'll show how we can derive the mean, the variance, and the covariance function. Finally, we'll provide a plot of some of the correlation functions for some example AR1 processes. We firstly start with the definition of an AR1. Yt equals a constant and depends upon Yt from last period. Where epsilon t, this we can think of as a shock, is assumed to be a white noise process. This means mean zero, constant variance, and the shocks are uncorrelated in different time periods. So we'd like to write Yt as a function of all the past shocks epsilon t. So to do this, we can use the recursive structure of the AR1 process. Firstly, we can note Yt minus one also has an AR1 form. We can then substitute in yt minus 1 into the AR1 process. We can plug it in and expand it out. Doing this, we will then find the line underneath. So now we have recursed back once, or back substituted once. So the terms in red just write the two expressions in a summation form. And this will be useful when we keep recursing back more and more, we'll start to see a pattern emerge. So we can see that mu plus mu thi 1 were written in a summation form beneath. And we can check this if these two things are equal just by expanding out the sum, which we can see. We can do the exact same thing for the term on the right. Epsilon t plus th phi 1 epsilon t minus 1 can be expressed succinctly in the summation form. When we recurse back and back and back, we'll start to see a, a general pattern emerging. We can now recurse back again. We can substitute yt minus 2 into the above and expand out again. And we now see the more terms added in. And again, these sums that are emerging on the right and the left, we can express in a synced summation form. We can now summarize then what we found from the first recursion, back substituting once, write yt as a function of yt minus 2. Then again, we then write yt as a function of yt minus 3. And we see these two forms, we see these two sums forming on each side. We can see in recursion 1, we get the summation in mu and thi 1 up, up to 1, and the same for the shocks. And again, we have now thi 1 to 1 plus 1, which is the recursion we're at plus 1, minus yt minus 2. Now we go recursion 2, we get this sum for mu, thi up to 2, we get thi 1 to the power 2 plus 1, 2 being the recursion we're at, and then yt minus 3, which is 2 plus 1. So we've seen the pattern that emerges at back substituting once and twice. We can now do it an arbitrary number of times j. So we can see we get this sum up to j of the mu part. And again on the right hand side, this sum will now go to j. We're now going back j time periods. And again on the middle term, the, it should be the recursion we're at, j plus 1. Just as it was in recursion 2, we get 2 to the 1 is 3. And again, it goes back 3. And again at re recursion 1, we get phi 1 squared which is 1 plus the recursion we're at. So again, we see the pattern emerging for gen going back a general number of times. J. We can then see what happens if we now let J go to infinity. We now recurse back an infinite number of times, where we'll see we need to have thi 1 less than 1 in absolute value such that the limit doesn't explode. So we're now going to let recursion go back forever and ever and ever. We now derive the limit of each of these three terms as j goes off to infinity. So we see the first term on the left. Well, this is just a geometric progression in thi 1. We're going to get 1 plus thi 1 plus thi 1 squared plus thi 1 cubed on and on forever. So this is just a geometric progression. And assuming that thi 1 is less than 1 in absolute value, which we have to do so the sum doesn't blow up, then we can use the geometric progression formula. So again, writing it out, we can see then it just goes back to infinity. If thi 1 is less than 1 in absolute value, we get 1 over 1 minus thi 1. So the first term, the first limit, letting j go back to infinity, can be done using the geometric progression formula. We can then derive the limit of the second term in the middle as j goes off to infinity. Again, assuming thi 1 less than 1 in absolute value, which we need so the series doesn't blow up, we can see then that thi 1 to the j plus 1 will just tend towards naught as j goes off to infinity. Take the case where thi 1 is a half. A half to the j plus 1. As the power goes off to infinity, a half to that power goes to naught. Therefore, we can show that this term multiplied by yt minus j plus 1 also goes to naught because the, the, the thi 1 to the power j plus 1 is going to naught very quickly. So this whole expression goes to naught. 
Finally then, we can work out the limit of the final term. Well, we've got the sum up to j. We now just let j go out to infinity. So again, we just get the sum of all these terms up to infinity. So then we just worked out the limit of these three terms, and we've shown that they're equal to this thing underneath. So we now re-express yt equivalently, when phi 1 is less than 1, into this form here, which is its ma infinity form. Well, we can now recap. So we've shown when phi 1 less than 1 absolute value, we can rewrite yt, an ar1, into this form beneath. So why then is this result useful? So we've re-expressed yt into its ma infinity form. This is useful because we, we, can, we have the general formulas for the mean and the variance and the covariance function of an ma infinity. So once we have these, we can then plug in the particular coefficients of the ma infinity representation of the AR1. Then we can work out all the corresponding mean, variance and covariances. So as an aside, we can now state, well, what are the general properties of an ma infinity? So again, we've given the definition of an ma infinity. And we can see for some coefficients alpha and all these thetas, we're going to get a different mean, variance, and covariance. So once we have a process in this form, then we can work out the mean, the variance, and the covariance just by using these formulas below. And we've seen, we just wrote why we just wrote an AR1 in a similar looking form to this AR in to this MA infinity for some particular coefficients alpha and theta. Well we can see the AR1 is an MA infinity where this alpha is mu over 1 minus thi1, and all these theta coefficients are just thi1 to the power s. So we can see that from the slide earlier, we, can, well, we wrote the AR1 into a form, very similar expression, where the alpha was this and the theta s was thi1 to the power s. So, from now, so we can now use the general formulas for the mean, the variance, and the covariances of an MA infinity, plugging in these particular coefficients we found for the AR1. We can first start with the mean. Well, the mean of an a MA infinity is just alpha, and in this, this case, alpha is mu over 1 minus thi1. So therefore, we have the mean of an AR1. We can then work out the variance by a similar method. We've got the general formula for the variance of an MA infinity. We can then plug in. In our case, theta to s is thi1 to the power s. So we plug in this expression and simplify down. So then we will get thi1 s squared. And then we can notice that this is just a geometric progression in thi1 squared. We get 1 plus thi1 squared plus thi1 to the 4 and so on. And again, because thi1 is less than 1, the limit of this we can get is 1 over 1 minus thi1 squared. It's the limit of a geometric progression. We can then do the exact same thing for the covariance function. So again, we've got the general formula for the covariance function of an MA infinity. We can plug in the MA infinity coefficients we found for the AR1. So it's theta s is thi1 to the s, and the same at s plus k, it's thi1 s plus k. So plug it in. Then we can use the product of power rules to simplify down this product of two powers. And again, we can note then that we can take thi1 k out of this sum because the sum is from s from 0 to infinity. So we can take the th thi 1k outside. We then note then that the sum on the right, well, this was just the variance that we found in the previous slide. So we can see that sigma squared times this sum is just the variance from before, which we label is just, is just gamma naught, it's the covariance of y with itself. Once we have the covariance function, it's then straightforward. The correlation function is just the covariance function divided by the variance, which is just thi1 to the k. So this is it. We have then the correlation function of an AR1 is the AR1 coefficient to the power k. We can then plot some examples of this for some particular AR1 coefficient. So we can then plot, well, what does a correlation, what does the correlation pattern look like? Well, if thi1 was 0.5, then the correlation is 0.5 to the k. We can plot this in a graph. We have the correlation lag 1, lag 2, and so on. We can see for this process that the correlation of yt with further away into the past is quickly dying away to naught. If the AR1 coefficient was 0.9, then again, the correlations would still be positive, and they would decline exponentially quickly. Likewise, we can see what happens at minus 0.5k, and we have then we have an oscillating pattern to the correlations. And again, the same thing for minus 0.9k, but now it dies away at a slower rate. So we can see what kind of correlation patterns an AR1 process can allow. So this is an overall recap of the properties of an AR1.